Hello, I'm Dr. Rohit Chandwani, and I'm a surgeon specializing in the treatment of patients with pancreatic cancer. Today I'll be talking about treatments and alternatives for patients who are newly diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Today we're going to answer several questions regarding the treatment for pancreatic cancer. We will go over the established treatments for the disease, how we as physicians decide on how to treat each person's disease, what the role of surgery is in the treatment of pancreatic cancer, and then finally we'll discuss the clinical trials and alternative treatments that are available at this time. So a few notes about pancreatic cancer. It is currently the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States. Beginning in 2020, it's expected, however, to be the second leading cause of cancer death, owing to its increased incidence. Approximately 7% of patients with pancreatic cancer are alive five years after their initial diagnosis, which conveys the poor survival from this disease. Unfortunately, only 15 to 20% of patients have disease that is amenable to surgery at the time of diagnosis. And even after an operation, pancreatic cancer does recur most of the time. What are the established treatments for pancreatic cancer? The mainstays really are threefold. The first is surgery. Surgery is typically performed for localized disease only, meaning that the cancer is restricted to the pancreas. The usual operations for localized disease are either a Whipple procedure for tumors that are in the head, neck, or the uncinate process of the pancreas, or a distal pancreatectomy for tumors of the body or tail of the pancreas. Both operations include removal of associated lymph nodes. The second well-established treatment for pancreatic cancer is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is often given as a combination of a variety of drugs, and these drugs are typically different for patients who have metastatic disease, meaning spread outside of the pancreas, and those patients who are being treated for any residual disease after surgery. Chemotherapy is almost always given to patients with metastatic disease and locally unresectable disease, meaning disease that cannot be removed. It is also sometimes given for disease that is localized and potentially removable to shrink the tumor before an operation. The third well-established treatment for pancreatic cancer is radiation. And radiation can be given in a variety of different ways. Regardless, radiation is commonly used for locally unresectable disease or for a specific spot of recurrent disease. When a patient is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, there are multiple elements in the patient evaluation that help decide how to time, sequence, and choose between the available treatment options. That patient evaluation consists of consultation with a surgeon, a medical oncologist, and sometimes a radiation oncologist. Together, these physicians will order many tests, which include a CAT scan and or an MRI of the abdomen, as well as a CAT scan of the chest. And this is to determine if there has been spread to the lung. In addition, a gastroenterologist may be called upon to perform an endoscopic ultrasound and or an ERCP, both of which convey more information about the mass in the pancreas. In addition, several lab tests may be ordered and a biopsy may be indicated. The goals of the patient evaluation are to arrive at a diagnosis and to determine the extent of disease. Specifically, we want to know if there has been evidence of spread to the other organs, and we would like to make a careful assessment of the involvement of nearby blood vessels and adjacent structures. In the end, a multidisciplinary assessment of each patient is crucial in determining the appropriate treatment strategy. This extensive evaluation is performed in order to classify patients into four broad categories. These broad categories help guide the treatment of the disease. The first category are patients who are resectable. These patients have a pancreatic cancer that is removable via an operation. The tumor typically does not contact or involve any of the nearby blood vessels or surrounding structures. The second group of patients are patients who are borderline resectable. These patients typically have a tumor that has mild to moderate involvement of adjacent blood vessels that make an immediate operation somewhat more challenging. The third group of patients are those that are deemed locally unresectable or locally advanced. These patients have disease that is extensive enough 
but within the pancreas that precludes an operation. Such patients most commonly have involvement of the nearby arteries that make an operation not possible at the outset. The majority of patients have metastatic disease. There is evidence of spread in these patients of the tumor to other organs. Pancreatic cancer shows a tendency to spread to the liver, the lung, and the peritoneal cavity. How do we treat patients with resectable disease? Importantly, surgery is usually the first treatment in patients with resectable disease. Occasionally, chemotherapy may be given first. And when it is given before an operation, it is called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. There is great debate within the pancreatic cancer community about whether or not chemotherapy should be given before surgery in resectable patients. Regardless, after surgery, chemotherapy is again usually given, typically beginning as early as four to six weeks after the operation or when the patient has mostly recovered. Patients are then followed with exams, a CT scan, and frequent laboratory testing every three to six months. Typically, this follow-up can be spaced out after about two years. What are the treatments for borderline resectable disease? In these patients, chemotherapy is usually the first treatment in patients with some involvement of the nearby blood vessels. As a result, a biopsy is generally performed to confirm the diagnosis before proceeding with chemotherapy. And sometimes, a stent may be placed in the bile duct to address jaundice. Chemotherapy is then given for two to three months before repeat imaging is obtained. And depending on the change in the tumor, surgery might be the next treatment followed by additional chemotherapy. However, if there is evidence of progression, meaning that the tumor has either enlarged or it has spread, surgery might no longer be an option. What are the treatments for locally unresectable disease? Again, chemotherapy is usually the first treatment in patients with locally unresectable disease. Importantly, this group of patients are not expected to be able to undergo an operation. Again, a biopsy is generally performed and a stent may be placed to address jaundice. Chemotherapy is given for two to three months at the outset, but is typically administered for a longer period of time, generally four to six months. In addition, radiation may be given to further treat the tumor and its local involvement. Sometimes, if there is improvement in the findings on the imaging studies, surgery may be possible even in patients with locally unresectable disease. While this is a minority of patients, there are patients who do undergo an operation when first diagnosed with locally unresectable disease and then treated with chemotherapy and radiation. In the absence of improvement, the expectation is that chemotherapy will be continued or that the patient will enroll in a clinical trial. This brings us to our final group of patients, and unfortunately the majority of patients, who present with metastatic disease. Again, chemotherapy is usually the first treatment in patients with metastatic disease. It has been shown that chemotherapy improves survival more than any other treatment option in patients who have metastatic disease. Again, a biopsy is performed and a stent may be placed as necessary. And again, chemotherapy is given for two months at a time before repeat imaging is obtained, as well as repeat laboratory testing. Radiation has less of a role in metastatic disease as there are multiple locations of tumor, and so it does not make sense to radiate all of the different locations where disease is found. With extremely rare exceptions, surgery to remove the tumor is not an option and will not be an option in these patients. The participation rate in clinical trials for patients with pancreatic cancer is extremely low, and so we encourage enrollment where possible. Finally, in patients with metastatic disease, because this is an aggressive tumor, we recommend early consultation with a palliative care specialist. Very frequently, even after an operation, pancreatic cancer comes back. When it does, a biopsy may be performed to confirm the diagnosis, and often chemotherapy and or radiation are used to either address metastatic disease or a single focus of recurrent tumor, respectively. As before, we encourage patients to seek out clinical trials as this helps to inform how we will treat patients moving forward. 
With regard to clinical trials, there are dozens of ongoing studies in pancreatic cancer, and as before, enrollment is encouraged. Some examples of these clinical trials include one at our institution where we are looking at high-dose vitamin C infusion for resectable and metastatic pancreatic cancer, other studies that look to address the microenvironment or the context in which the tumor resides, and then other studies that look at radiation. These are just a few examples of the clinical trials that are ongoing, but there are several hundred throughout the country that are worth exploring. In conclusion, the timing and sequence of therapy are individualized, but they are similar for patients who fall into each of the four broad categories that are defined based on the extent of disease. The most well-established treatment options for this disease are surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Many patients ask about newer treatment options for their pancreatic cancer. Some have heard of the nanoknife or of ablation, which are locally directed therapies. There are other cancers for which there are many targeted therapies, and there has been a lot of excitement recently about immunotherapy. Unfortunately, none of these classes of therapeutic options have been shown to improve outcomes in a significant proportion of pancreatic cancer patients. Therefore, they remain investigational at this time. Fourth, a thorough multidisciplinary assessment of each patient is necessary to appropriately formulate a treatment plan. And as I mentioned, clinical trial enrollment is encouraged. I have heard a lot about immunotherapy. Is this an option for me? Possibly, but it is important to note that the greatest efficacy to date has been demonstrated in other types of cancer, including lung cancer, some colon cancers, and a form of skin cancer known as melanoma. The rate of response among pancreatic cancer patients has been disappointingly low. We do not yet know how to predict which patients might benefit from immunotherapy, but extensive research is underway. I have been recommended to undergo a procedure called the nanoknife. Should I do it? There remains substantial controversy regarding the use of the nanoknife, also known as irreversible electroporation, in the treatment of patients with pancreatic cancer. Early reports have shown that there is a higher rate of complications from this procedure than at first anticipated. As such, the use of the nanoknife remains investigational at this time. What new treatments might be on the way? There are many, from high-dose vitamin C to medications that attempt to alter the environment around the cancer. There are many investigational drugs that are the subject of clinical trials across the country today. In addition, there are epigenetic therapies, and newer forms of immunotherapy that try to target this cancer. While there is no magic pill or cure at this time, participation in clinical trials is highly encouraged so that we may better understand how to treat this disease. For more information, you can call the section of hepatobiliary surgery and liver transplantation at Wild Cornell Medicine at 212-746-2127. Or you can visit our websites for either the Department of Surgery or our pancreas program. And finally, clinical trials can be researched by searching for pancreatic cancer on the clinicaltrials.gov website.